Hello again, welcome back to my channel. I made this render a couple of days ago, some of my friends asked for a tutorial, so I am remodeling the scene from scratch today. We will be making materials and will also be learning rigid body simulation, this scene can be a perfect example for those who want to follow along and learn how Blender's rigid body physics works, I will be giving some tips as well, to tackle the problems that many new beginners and even the intermediate ones face while using rigid body. But before we jump into Blender, if you're new to the channel then please subscribe and ring the bell icon as well, so you are always updated of my new upcoming videos. And if you love my work, then you can totally follow me on my Patreon page. I have my Patreon link in the description, all my patrons will get my version of the blend file for free, and much more. I will totally appreciate your support. Well let's go to Blender. Don't delete the cube, first we are going to make the plus, or the X sign that you can see in the final render. GZ1. Go to edit mode and select the face select mode. Select the four outer faces by shift clicking on each of them. Press on the extrude icon and select extrude individuals. Drag the yellow pointer upward and we have individual extrudes on all of the selected faces. It's looking good for a base mesh. Now I am going to bevel it to get rid of the sharp edges. Go to the modifiers tab and select bevel. 0.11 is a lot, I am going to drop it to 0.02. and I will increase the segments to 2, so later on it won't collapse when I use a subdivision modifier. Well go back to edit mode. Ctrl R to bring an edge loop cut. Have it right in the middle. Add another loop cut as well. Turn on transparency and go to wireframe mode. Select vertex select mode. We will be deleting most of the mesh vertices. We now have a shape like this. Go to the modifiers tab and select mirror. You can see our object is mirrored along its x axis. Check y axis as well to have it also mirrored along y axis. We have the original shape back. But you remember we didn't had flat edges in the final render, so we will make them round. Go to edit mode, select edge select mode, select the outer edge. I will turn on screencast key so you also can see what I am doing. Ctrl B to bevel it. Increase the segments count to 12. We are getting these edge lines, we will fix them in a while. Now you can see why I used the mirror modifier. Bevel the other edge as well. Now shade smooth. Auto smooth. The artifacts are still there, it's because of the bevel modifier. Switch from none to angle. You can see it's fixed. Because it's only beveling the edges now. And the rest of the geometry is totally clean. I am going to bring in a subdivision modifier as well. I forgot to turn on clipping in the mirror modifier, so you don't get any artifacts after the subdivision modifier. I have disabled subdivision modifier for the view mode, it will be used only for the end results. Move our object to one side. Now bring in a circle into the scene. You can reduce the vertices count to 16 or 24, but I am going to keep it on default. Go to edit mode. E to extrude then scale it down. It's looking ok. Now alt select, all the upper faces. Then E to extrude them up. It's way a lot, bring it down a little. Yeah it's fine now.
Again bring in a bevel modifier with a 0.02 offset. and change the segments count to 2 and also select angle again shade smooth auto smooth and bring in a subdivision modifier scale down the other geometry so it can match the scale of our circular object, that we just created. Now bring in a cube. Scale it up. I want the origin of the cube right at its base, so if we want to scale it later, we don't have to readjust it again. Place the cube right above the grid. Click on object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now go to edit mode and select the top face. Press I to inset. E to extrude, then GZ, to take it down. Go to front view, turn on x-ray mode to see how far we going. That much is enough. Now we will be setting up the materials. Go to the shading tab. I have already made a text file of the hex color codes I used earlier, I will drop its link in the description as well. Select your desire color, or use the hex code I provided. Lower the specular value. I have selected the cube's material instead of the circle, well I am going to select the same material for the circular object as well. Increase the roughness. Change the IOR value to 1.519. This is the simplest way to achieve similar results. This material can work but if you want a better render. You always need a better material. I made this simple material because most people do not like to create materials, or use the shader editor, they can totally skip these few next steps and jump directly ahead. Well now we are creating the final rubber material. Delete the principled node. Bring in diffuse and glossy shader nodes. Now bring in a mixed shader. Connect the shader outputs to mixed shader. Now connect the mix shader to the final output node. Increase the glossy value to 0.650. Drag the diffuse node behind. Duplicate the mix shader node. I am changing the render engine to cycles. Now bring in a velvet BSDF node. Connect it to the mix shader. Now bring in the Fresnel node. Connect its factor to the factor input of the mix shader. Again change the IOR value to 1.519. Bring in a mix RGB node. 
set it to multiply. Connect its color output to all the color input nodes. It's getting messy, I will be using reroute. Now bring in ARGB node. Connect its color output to the mix RGB node. I will copy the hex code for the color I selected earlier. Now bring in a Voronoi texture. Change F1 to N sphere radius, from the F1 drop down menu. Connect radius to the input factor of mix RGB. I forgot earlier to switch from GGX to Beckman. Duplicate the mix RGB node. Select lighten this time. Increase factor to 1. And select a darker color, or use the hex color code that I provided, it's totally up to you. We are nearly done. The material is looking good, and in more light it will look more better. But you can notice some textures on the object. It's because we didn't scaled up the Voronoi texture. If I scale it up to 500, the textures get smaller. It's looking good but I prefer the value 800. Our material is ready now. I will use the same material on the other object as well. You can just go to the materials tab, and select it from the materials drop down menu. Select the box. You can use your own desired color or use the hex code. The shading process is done. Now it's time to set up the scene using rigid body physics. Select the box and go to the Blender's Physics Properties tab. Change the type to Passive. Collision Shape to Mesh. I will be talking about sensitivity in a while. Now select the other objects and select Rigid Body. We just have to change Convex Hull to Mesh. and keeping type 2 active, because they will be reacting with other objects, and also gravity. So if we just press play, the active objects will start falling, but the passive object won't move. I am going to bring in a plane and scale it up. It's just for future light bounces, it's not a rigid body. So the active objects will still fall through it. Bring in the objects right inside the box. Scale up the box a little. Now we will be talking about the sensitivity option. I have sensitivity on default and if I press play, they will fall down. But they will keep on vibrating like this. I am going to decrease the box sensitivity to 0.0004. You can see they are not vibrating a lot now. Objects going through the box is another thing, we will fix it in a while. I will also change the sensitivity of both the active objects to also 0.0004. Now play back again, you can see the objects are reacting even more different. Now to fix the objects going through the geometry, Select the object and switch the source from deform to final. Final is used for end results, but we will keep it on final from now. Now play back again, and you will see it's perfect now.
I am going to duplicate the objects now a couple of times. If you uncheck the pointer from any object in the outliner window, you won't be able to select it later until you check it again. The duplicated objects already have their rigid body settings. So we just have to play it now. Yeah you can see it started working. Go to the scene properties tab. Change the steps per second from 60 to 200 in the rigid body world settings, and change the iteration value from 10 to 40. Scale down the box. Now it's totally on the detailing process, how you want them to fall, which object you want more in the scene, which object should be on top, it's totally up to you. You have to try it again and again by changing the object's placement, to get different results, till you get what you want. Now to set up the camera. I used a resolution of 1080 by 1080, to get a perfect square render. Go to the camera setting. Check depth of field. I used the focal length of 70 millimeters. Now adjust the camera to your liking. You can work on it a little bit more, and you will have your animation or a perfect rendered image. But yeah your scene will not be complete without a good lighting setup. You can see my lighting setup that I used for my final scene. Detailing to get a perfect render takes a lot of time. But if you have dedication then you will be able to get more beautiful renders. I hope you loved the video, if you did then please like the video and subscribe my channel as well, to show some support so I can bring more and more content for all of you, and if you have any questions you can totally ask me in the comment box. Well this is all for today, see you in my next video. Take care till then, happy blending.